We are all constantly searching for the best magical way to improve our craft, the best hack, and the fastest shortcut. Maybe we're into photography, writing, filmmaking, painting, sculpting, you name it. But in reality, improving and growing your craft can be straightforward. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Hi, my name is Jorge. Welcome. On this channel, we merge creativity and productivity to try to live a more fulfilling life. Improving and growing as an artist can be straightforward. You have to do it to get better, and the more you do it, the better you get at it as well. However, that does not mean that it's easy. If it were easy, every single person would be the best at everything, all at once. So today I would like to talk about the process of doing and improving, hours versus iterations, and other things that can help you prepare for a successful creative journey. Let's get started. Maybe you have heard of the 10,000 hour rule, but in case you haven't, let me summarize it for you. In his book, Outliers, published in 2008, Malcolm Gladwell talks about how 10,000 hours of deliberate practice are needed to become world-class in any field. Ever since the book was published, many people have taken a stance on the matter. Many agree and say it is the correct way to go, and many others say it's too broad and it's too impersonal. And, believe it or not, both sides are correct. The principle seems to hold up with very repeatable and technical tasks, like playing chess, for example, where there are suggested ages to start, timelines for becoming a professional, and even charts and graph that measure it as well. But we cannot say the same thing about creative endeavors. Things like photography and writing and filmmaking, dancing and painting. There is no timeline for that. There's no set amount of hours, there's no preset you can drag and drop into people and be the same experience for everybody. Therefore, I take the 10,000 hour rule or principle with a huge grain of salt. I don't dismiss it, there's definitely value in there, but it doesn't really fit my style, it doesn't fit my mentality and the way I do things. However, it does open the door to think about other things like this. The people that think that measuring your progress in hours is too broad normally modifies the 10,000 hour rule or principle and make it a lot more specific and a lot more personal as well. Therefore, if you're a painter, you need 10,000 paintings to be world class at it, and if you're a photographer, you need 10,000 photographs to be world class at it as well. Henri Cartier Brezon's famous quote is, your first 10,000 photographs are your worst. It is not that different from the original rule or principle stated earlier in this video, and I cannot be harsh about it. I understand where they're coming from. Principles are designed to be broad so they can be applied to a large group of people. But it does make you wonder, why not 20,000 as the magic number? Why do people keep modifying the original 10,000 hour rule and now into the variant of 10,000 photographs? And the thing is, we always try to make it relatable, we always try to make it pertinent to our situation, and that is valid. Iterations is what really matters, not the number of hours that you put in, or the number of paintings that you paint, or photographs that you take. Perhaps sounds very similar to the 10,000 hour variant, and the 10,000 photograph variant, but it's actually quite, quite different. Let's take a look. You see, the subtitle is, Iteration Drives the Learning Curve, not 10,000 units drive the learning curve, or 10,000 photographs drive the learning curve. And it involves self-awareness as well, to really know what number applies to you, if any, and also takes into consideration your actual desire and your need and your wants to grow and to get good. In his book and podcast, Naval Ravikant states, Doing encapsulates a lot. So, for example, let's say I want to learn how to run a business. Well, if I start a business where I go in every day and I'm doing the same thing. Let's say I'm running the retail store down the street where I'm stocking the shelves with food and liquor every single day. I'm not going to learn that much because I'm repeating things a lot. So I'm putting in thousands of hours, but there are thousands of hours doing the same thing. Whereas if I was putting in thousands of iterations, that would be different. So the learning curve is across iterations. So if I was trying new marketing experiments in the store all the time, I was constantly changing out the inventory. I was constantly changing out the branding and the messaging. I was constantly changing the sign. I was constantly changing the online channels that I was used to drive foot traffic in. I was experimenting with being open at different hours. If I even had the ability to walk around and talk to other store owners and get in their books and figure out how they're running their business. It's the number of iterations that drives a learning curve. So the more iterations you can have, the more shots on goal you can have, the faster you're gonna learn. 
And this is where all the rules and all the principles previously discussed in this video perfectly align for us creatives, photographers, filmmakers, painters, sculptors, you name it. It is the number of iterations that matter. All right, so iteration is not just repetition. It's not just the act of repeating something. It goes beyond that. It adds learning to the curve, and that's really important. For example, I mentioned this in a previous video, but I had to take over 700 images to get this one right here. It was a great experience that helped me learn and iterate my photography process. But 700 plus photographs does not equate to 700 plus iterations. And that whole experience was just one iteration. I didn't learn any groundbreaking techniques every single photo that I took. I didn't improve my technical skills with every photograph that I took. This whole process was just one iteration. On a regular day, I'll take around 200 photographs. Out of those, perhaps 10 are decent, and perhaps one is really good. However, I only know that because I went through the process of reviewing my work, going through every image, see what I did wrong, see where I messed up, see what I can improve, where I can do better. And that is a real meaning of iterations. Taking 200 photos in a day does not equate to 200 iterations. If you're lucky, 200 photos will equate to one iteration. Therefore, we have to be really careful on how we approach our creative journey. It is very possible to take thousands of images and learn absolutely nothing from them, either by putting the minimum effort and then being disappointed about the results, or, on the other hand, putting a lot of hard work and effort into the wrong thing and still being disappointed about the results as well. So, do you want to be a better photographer and grow as an artist? Then put hundreds or thousands of iterations on the line. Not hours, not photographs, but iterations. Iterations drive the learning curve. So, to me that is one of the most important things to keep in mind when trying to grow and learn and be better. There are other things to keep in mind as well that I mentioned in previous videos, like the technical aspects, the exposure triangle, learn how to shoot in manual mode, shoot in JPEG only, and things like that. I've made several of those types of videos and you can watch them right here. But thousands of iterations will make you grow and will make you get good. How many iterations, you ask? I leave that homework to you. As always, I'm curious to know what do you think? What tool do you use to measure the growth of your creative journey? Is it hours? Is it units? Or is it iterations? Share your thoughts in a comment down below. But that is it for today's video. If you found this video helpful or valuable, please like and subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and join my free newsletter as well. Thank you very much for watching, for giving me your time and your energy, and good luck with your creative process.